Hello and welcome back to Electric TV. I'm your host, Dominic Gerotano. In this edition, we pick things up with part two of our three-part informational series on LED lighting. In our last installment, which you can double back and view in our archives, by the way, we heard from Dr. James Broderick of the United States Department of Energy. In part one, you heard about the DOE's interest in LEDs because of some staggering forecasts. The department says LEDs will reduce lighting consumption by 46% by 2030. You also heard that over the next 20 years, the department's forecasts $250 billion, with a B, in energy savings. Numbers that should get everyone's attention. And the reason why we're producing this series as service to the electrical industry stakeholders and customers. Now that we've established there's energy to be saved and money to be made, we move on to part two, where our Bob Miske sat down with Dr. Jack Curran, longtime industry consultant and LED expert. Let's hear about what Dr. Curran has to say about some of the practical issues surrounding the ever-advancing march toward LED lighting. Thank you very much. I am indeed joined by Dr. Curran. Doctor, thank you for taking a few moments with us today. Oh, my pleasure. First question is, in your view, where do you see the pace of LED development? Kind of where do things stand right now? I think we're at a point now where it's not a novelty anymore. I think many manufacturers, the, the major luminaire manufacturers, uh, are all producing LED-based products. So we've moved beyond the novelty, the wow, this is LED based, uh, this is something cool. It's still cool for a lot of people, but it's now becoming more mainstream. Uh, when you talk to the major manufacturers, there are significant percentages of the products that they're shipping now are LED based. Dr. Curran pointed out advantages that are making LEDs more commonplace. They are small, they are on the average six times more efficient than incandescents and getting better every year. They can be dimmed, they are directional, and you can do things with color variation that you couldn't do before. And finally, the cost of jumping into solid state lighting continues to drop. Curran referenced what's known as Haight's Law, an empirical law that has shown that every 10 years, the performance goes up by a factor of 20 and the cost comes down by a factor of 10. So, the LEDs get 20 times better every 10 years and cost 10 times less. Perhaps obvious advantages, but still no slam dunk when it comes to acceptance. One of the things that I like to point out to people is that there's a culture clash in the lighting world because if you think about it, traditional lighting has been around for 100 years. The styles change slowly over time, but the technology doesn't. LEDs come from the semiconductor world, where change is, is, is the major uh, effort that people are looking for. So what that means is there's a constant change. People don't want to stock, for example, distributors don't want to stock too much inventory because they could be left with obsolete inventory. Uh, for architects, for example, they specify a project, it might be three years later by the time the project's actually going in. Three years later in LED is like dog years. Uh, things have changed drastically. Adding to the trepidation of jumping into the technology with both feet is the fact that there are so many new players in the LED market. With traditional lighting, you have a lot of kind of the big dog manufacturers. Everybody knows who they are. But with LED, you have many manufacturers, and that probably adds to the confusion a little, right? I think one of the confusing points is there's a lot of people that have jumped into the LED lighting world that were not in the traditional lighting business. And so there's a caution there. I mean, obviously, I run a small company, and I'm in favor of small companies. Mm -hmm. But if you're buying a product from someone who is not one of the major luminaire manufacturers that have been around for, for you know, tens of decades, you have to worry about, is that company still going to be in business uh, three years from now, five years from now? If they give you a warranty, what good is the warranty if they're no longer around? And there are a lot of very good small companies that have come up with very interesting and novel products, but you just have to do your homework and see what exactly they're doing and what do they look like? Are they going to be around five years from now? 
There's a number of tools. One, the Department of Energy has a uh, product called Lighting Facts. Uh, and I always advise people don't buy a product that doesn't have a Lighting Facts label on it. What the Lighting Facts label does is it says that the manufacturer has had their product tested by a third-party testing lab so that it performs the way they say it, uh, that it does. And unfortunately, it's been a fact of the uh, LED world that a lot of manufacturers, at least initial on, made claims that the product actually couldn't deliver on. The Caliber program is a uh, independent testing program. I call it a secret shopper program, where the uh, government goes out and they buy product off the shelf, they send it to a testing lab, and they verify or just report that the product either does or doesn't perform as the manufacturer says it does. The other program is the Gateway program, and that's one that's a demonstration program where the, uh, they will go out and say pick a street or a museum or a supermarket, and they'll install LED product and then evaluate how it performs. Do they get the energy savings that they expect? What the customers or residents think of it? If it's a street, for example, what do the police think of it in terms of the light characteristics? And then they report all that. Typically, you'll find something in every, every uh, application, you'll find something that you just didn't expect. And it's the gotchas sometimes that you have to watch out for. Let's go through a couple of the myths or misconceptions right now with LED lighting. They produce no heat. In fact, they do. They don't, they're much more efficient than traditional lighting sources, but they do produce heat. And the problem with an LED is they don't radiate the heat. If you put your hand next to an incandescent light bulb, you would feel the heat being radiated from it. An LED, the heat is generated within the LED itself, and you have to have a physical path to be able to bring that heat to the outside to be able to dissipate it. Okay, another one, LEDs last forever. That's, uh, uh, I mean, I've seen claims, I gave a talk one time called 100,000 Hours and Other LED Fairy Tales. And, uh, during the talk, I asked people to humor me and I asked if somebody had a stopwatch and I said, I'm going to turn this LED on, let's see how long it lasts. So somebody started their stopwatch and about eight minutes later, I whipped out a hammer and I smashed it. <laughs> and uh, they, you know, of course that LED lasted eight minutes. The point was that, uh, not that I wanted to be a Gallagher, but the fact that I was trying to show that how long an LED lasts is very much a function of the environment and how it's treated. I'd say in a reasonably designed fixture, you can get them to very easily last 50,000 hours, 100,000 hours. In fact, in most cases, in my opinion, it's probably not going to be the LED that's the first thing that fails. It's probably going to be the driver, the power supply. As Dr. Curran points out, when it comes to solid state lighting, there is a tendency to forget there's more involved than just the light emitting diode itself. To make the luminaire complete, there's the driver or power source. There's optics to put the light where you want it to be. There's a housing fixture. And there's thermal management to dissipate the heat. If any of these elements fail, the fixture fails. There's a supermarket in my neighborhood and uh, they put in LED fixtures in their refrigerator cases. Six weeks after they were in, they, uh, I was walking by and one of the freezer cases was out. The uh, manager of the store came by and I know him and uh, he said, oh yeah, I just go ahead and kick it and it comes back on again. So it had nothing to do with the LED. There was a, there was a short circuit or just a, 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 a bad connection. Uh, the other thing is the fact that LEDs aren't magical in terms of maintenance. For example, in street lighting, uh, typically you have to go up every so often and clean the lens. You do that many times just by the fact of replacing the light uh, source that's in there. With an LED, if you plan on putting it up there and not touching it for 15 years, you're kidding yourself because dirt is still going to collect on that LED fixture just like it will for any other type of fixture. Street lighting is an area where LED lighting is taking hold, but there are still issues to watch out for. I think the, uh, the, the places that take advantage of the, uh, the unique characteristics of the uh, LEDs, so street lighting is one. Street lighting from the point of view of LEDs are highly directional, so I can put the light exactly where I want it. Light trespass is a major issue with, uh, with LEDs. In fact, I have uh, one slide I use sometimes in presentations, I call it, be careful what you ask for, you might get it. 
uh, the manufacturer had designed their streetlight product to have an absolute cutoff right at the curb line. Well, when it was installed in one of the uh, test programs, the uh, residents uh, objected because now all of a sudden their sidewalks were totally dark. For the electrical contractor, there's much to be gained or market share to be lost, depending on your readiness for the LED wave that is clearly building. I think you want to have someone in your organization that you're kind of designating the LED person. And they need to be looking at a lot of sources. I mean, again, the Department of Energy has a lot of good information on their website on uh, the technology, as we talked about before, the Gateway, the Caliper program, those type of things. LEDs, at least for the next 10 years or so, are going to have this constant evolution and, and rapid change of, of product and abilities and it's very critical that a contractor has someone in their organization that's keeping track of that. For the forward-thinking electrical contractor, perhaps it's time to add a new position to the managerial chart, Director of LED Technology. If a contractor is not getting out there, the example I like to think of is if, a if, a, uh, if, if a, someone in business uh, was selling and repairing VCRs 15 years ago, their business is pretty much dried up now. Uh, if you are not taking LEDs into account and starting to plan for LEDs as being a major portion of your business, you're going to be hurting because all your competitors are not making that assumption and they are learning about it, trying it, uh, putting in projects and, and making sure that they're aware of what's going on. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're welcome. Okay. With special thanks to IBW Local 164 in Paramus, New Jersey for putting a roof over our head for this interview, let's throw it back. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Dr. Curran. There is so much going on with LEDs these days and solid state lighting. We hope this brief segment will point you to where you can spend all the time you want on the subject. Again, if you missed part one of our series with Dr. James Broderick of the U.S. Department of Energy, you can go to our archive section and find it there. Coming up soon here on ETV, part three of our series, where we'll take you to see some LEDs in action and talk about the energy savings realized by their use. That's it for now. I'm Dominic Gerotano. Check us out on Twitter or become a subscriber to be kept in the know by clicking above. We'll see you next time right here on Electric TV.